Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. We're going to start with this one here from WeezyX. It says, XRP buyback proposal looks like a scam, says Ripple CTL. So this is coming from an article by the Crypto Basic. And it says, Ripple's uh, CTO, David Schwartz, has offered his opinion on the controversial XRP buyback proposal, saying it looks like a scam. So we covered this in our previous video. And uh, coming over here, obviously, we know about John Deaton's uh, statements in regards to his tweet thread that he had put out when he's trying to distance himself from this buyback proposal. And I had mentioned... Uh, crypto lulu a little bit on it and he had came out with a video here it's about 14 minutes long it's pretty a pretty good video i, I, I kind of liked it and i kind of saw his side of things but i wanted to play this little segment uh within this video kind of him saying uh my side of things here so let's take a quick listen into this you know you get the idea so what have i learned from this whole experience i've learned that i probably don't want to be on twitter anymore <laughs> i'm going to be but very very kind of hands offy um, I just now just go straight into my DMs to see who's messaged and I don't really check the feed anymore because it really, really hurts when you're being misrepresented online for things that are completely not true and people making assumptions about you. It's actually really, really tough and it's hard to explain without you having been through it as well. But my main learning from this whole thing was when I get given documentation, I should probably read the whole thing. Um, and I'd imagine this is probably the only part of this video that's going to get clipped. But look, I'm not gonna see all the clips, so it doesn't really matter. Anyone who's clipping this will have erased everything that happened in the in the video up to this point, so it is what it is. But I certainly do need to read all documentation and analyze how the information within the documentation would actually potentially impact the, the audience and how it could potentially impact my perception online, you know? Because I am a full-time content creator now. I left left my job to do this type of thing. My thought process was purely if I'm leaving my job, I need to have some really good information. And if I've got information from source, like from a buyback proposal, that would be great information that people could listen to. But when people take it out of context and people treat it unreasonably and it changes the way people view me unjustifiably, that impacts my stability in, in what I do, right? So I left my, left my full-time job to be so obviously he has a lot riding on it, leaving his full time job and doing this crypto thing, this so-called uh, influencer life uh, researcher in the crypto space. Uh, you know, he has a lot riding on this. So, I mean, I thought it was a, a, a great video he put out taking some ownership and, you know, taking some some licks and and learning from his lessons. But obviously this crypto buyback stuff has caused a lot of controversy, especially them throwing John Deaton's name in there without his uh, approval, um, which was completely shameful but whether you know uh, obviously whether their intentions were pure or not pure whether it's a scam or not that's not for me to decide but i just know that it spilled a lot of drama and a lot of people were affected by it and even people that are so called interested in you know actually throwing in their money into this proposal and you know looking into things it's just it was just a mess so uh, more things to come i'm sure they're going to surface from it but uh, just be careful out there like i always tell you this on this channel man you know be safe out there you have to protect your assets at the end of the day. I want to cover this from James K. Fallon, man. James K. Fallon always does a great job of updating us on kind of what's happening. He says, John Deaton will be following a motion to file an amicus brief in the Zach, uh, Zach Nov, Zach, Zachy Nov, sorry about that, v. Ripple in California. There, the plaintiffs claim that Ripple sold XRP as an unregistered security. They are asking the court to certify a class of all XRP holders who purchased a new hold XRP, a now hold XRP or sold XRP at a loss. The proposed class would include XRP holders worldwide, including the 75,890 XRP holders around the world who disagree with the plaintiffs in the uh, Zakinov and uh, Zakinov and say XRP is not a security. Also proposed class is not limited to direct sales by Ripple and includes all sales of XRP, including secondary sales and international sales in countries where XRP has already been determined not to be a security. John Dean will argue, among other things, the court should not certify the class because of these conflicts and because there is only a small number of XRP holders who claim XRP and under, unregistered security, while so many XRP holders worldwide claim it's not. John Deaton will argue that those small number of plaintiffs in the in the litigation cannot fairly represent so many who disagree with them, including XRP holders in places where XRP is not even considered a security. So obviously, John Deaton's doing strong work, you know, sacrificing his time, his energy and effort because it's so important. All these things that can be seen as little things, these little uh, spinoffs in different litigations and, and ver certain verbiage about, um, you know, obviously the digital asset uh, XRP, the secondary sales 
levels and the status of it being a security, non-security. Like, it's all so important. As you can tell, he's fighting the good fight, trying to make sure that, hey, these people shouldn't be, you know, the sample that, you know, you can overgeneralize for the entire population because there's more people that feel otherwise in this ecosystem, in the XRP community. So... Obviously, he's doing the doing the, the good deeds here, fighting the good fight for for the entire industry. It's not just for uh, Ripple and XRP. So shout out John Deaton and th thanks to James K. Fallen for updating us. James K. Fallen has another one here. It says in the library case, a court had issued an order scheduling additional discovery on remedies. Um, something I wanted to touch on with from this right here. Obviously, he has um, uh, the document here. Jeremy Hogan had a good point here. He says. Uh, the SEC is seeking disgorgement damages against library. That is the total of the LBC token sales minus legitimate business expenses. The fight here is over what uh, legitimate business expenses there are. LBC holders will end up with a pack of gum and a paperclip in the end. And he put a 100 emoji, which is tragic. Um, that is just shameful, man. The SEC's behaviors, their actions, and I think I put it down here. I actually didn't register it here, but it's it just... Um, it's just crazy. And then XRP Crypto Wolf had a good point here. He's like, how is this library case not completely over yet? I really hope this doesn't happen for the XRP lawsuit. So it made me really think. Like, quite honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, say, you know, uh, Ripple wins. You know, outright wins this thing. If there's some sort of appeal, some sort of more delays, more time. Who knows, you know, what's behind just the X or the SEC's uh, agenda. But I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, that's just how shameful and their, their behavior's been. So, um who knows? Obviously, we have certain timelines and end dates that's been speculated from the, you know, attorneys and legal uh, people that we follow within the community. But I just wouldn't be surprised. And it, it, it'll just be shameful. But, you know, it is what it is. We'll kind of see how things unfold here. There's been a lot of drama with this Craig Wright stuff. So Craig Wright says, uh, describes Ripple and XRP as a pyramid scheme, which will end soon. So I'm just putting this up here because I really don't care about the drama, but it's good to kind of talk about some of these things. The big point that I'm taking out of this is just look, look at the, um, just the negativity, right. And the, um, just the conversations on the, on the, uh, I guess you could say the negative side of, of things against ripple and XRP, the digital asset. And it's like pyramid scheme and it's a scam, a, a poop token, a poop coin, a poop project, no real use case, no utility, but it's like, look what, the ripple team is doing just as the company alone right and look at xrp the digital asset yeah it's suppressed and yeah the price is low but they're constantly still building xrp ledger is still expanding ripple the company is still setting partnerships and still growing at a, at a tremendous rate even under the scrutiny of the sec uh lawsuit and, and, and then you got brad garland house and the like out there making you know building relationships and talking positively about people that's been attacking them and just being the adults in the room as we say in this community Seeing this stuff only makes me more bullish, and and that's why I'm putting this up. You know, if if obviously if you're listening to the channel, you obviously have some sort of um, connection, whether you're an investor or you've been in, uh, researching about Ripple and XRP, the digital asset, and you have high conviction on it. So obviously, you know, this is just more fuel for our fire. It, that's why I brought this up. I thought this was interesting. This is it's a tweet from Stuart Adorati, who's uh, Ripple's general counsel, says, just released photo of SEC misguided case following two years of Ripple relentless defense. And this is that um, that balloon that was shot down. Was it a balloon? Yeah, I think, I think it was a balloon that was shot down. It was like a, a what did they say, a Chinese spy balloon or something like that? Um, but yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Gensler right here. Oh, no. All I can think about is that. Oh, no. And then uh, Brad Garner House says, quote, the SEC wants you to think that it cares about disclosure, transparency and clarity. When the truth eventually comes out, the shamefulness of their behavior here will shock you. Just this is just a great uh, little uh, uh, image that they had put together here. Uh, let me go ahead and shout this out. Who was that? Uh, what was this? Crypto Bull XRP. So Crypto Bull Lit. Shout out, man. Let me go ahead and like that. That's cool, man. Actually, I'll retweet it too. Moving on here. This is from uh, Cointelegraph. It says, Visa crypto strategy targets stablecoin settlements. A Star War uh, session 2023 Visa Kwai Sheffield shared the company's vision for digital assets. Um, John Deaton hit it on the head right here. He says, Visa, quote, we've been testing how to actually accept settlement payments from issuers in USDC starting on Ethereum and paying out in USDC on Ethereum. Ethereum. And then John Deaton says, regulatory head start is a big head start. Visa crypto strategy targets stablecoin settlements. 
Oh boy. Man, I just I just can't wait for this this uh Ripple versus SC lawsuit to to be done. Ripple to win, you know, whatever they got to do, pay whatever their fines are. The the status of X, XRP the digital asset is is in a security and Ripple and the digital asset XRP and XRPL are able to move forward, flourish and solve real world problems, man. Uh I'm just excited. Even just even with all the conflicts of interest, the backdoor deals, the shady stuff, the hindering of the asset and the company Ripple, I mean, Gosh, I just can't wait till, in, in a sense, there's a level playing field. XRP is going to be one of the first ones that have true, legitimate, uh, you know, regulatory clarity. Ah, keep finding the good fight. I really like this. Uh, Weezy X, I put this up. So this is an interview with uh, Brian Brooks here. So let's take a quick listen into this. About a minute 41. It's super important. And then I'm going to touch on Jeremy Hogan's tweet here. And then we're going to conclude the video. So let's take a quick listen into this. Don't do that to me. Let me hold and refresh this. Jeez. I need a compliant computer, man. Here we go. Dollar is backed by the full faith and credit of the <clears throat> United States of America. That's a fair statement, I think. Uh, cryptocurrencies seem to be backed by the people who hold cryptocurrency. Uh, is that a fair statement? I, I, I don't think so, actually. I think I probably... Okay, so he said cryptocurrency. You've seen... Let me go ahead and reply that real quick. Backed by the people who hold cryptocurrency. S seem to be backed by the people people who hold cryptocurrency. So keep that in mind as we go through this video and as we go through uh, Jeremy Hogan's uh, tweet that he put. Uh, is that a fair statement? I, I, I don't think so, actually. I think I probably disagree with both of those statements. Okay. okay. Well, explain, please. Okay. So... Sure. So what's backed by the full faith and credit of the United States is U.S. debt. Okay. A dollar bill is not U.S. debt. A dollar bill is just a unit of exchange you use to buy things with. Um, if you look at what's happened in monetary policy over the last 12 months, the U.S. has increased the M2 money supply by 40%, which inherently devalues the amount of the, uh, the purchasing power of the dollar. You saw that in the inflation reports that were in this morning's newspapers. So that's an example of the dollar not being backed by the full faith and credit. It's backed by by American monetary policy at any given moment. Um, so there's the cryptocurrency, if you look quickly. Right, so, so, so cryptocurrency, um, again, put Bitcoin aside just for a moment. What cryptocurrency is about is the belief that a particular network will gain adoption. So it's, it's you know, when you buy an Ethereum token, an ETH token, that's like saying, I believe this network, which is a smart contract protocol for building financial applications, it basically apps like on your cell phone, is going to have value. So if you think Google stock has value because you think internet traffic is going to go up and Google is a tracking stock for the internet, buying ETH tokens is like believing that the Ethereum protocol will become the default protocol for financial applications. That That's what it's backed by is adoption rates of that protocol. Um, adoption rates by our protocol. So let's uh, look at this. So uh, Jeremy Hogan had put... Um, this He's been... It says a weekend reading right here. So uh, let me go ahead and read what he said. He says, quote, trust is the sole backing for most of the money in the world. So let's, co let's come in here real quick. It says, uh, the capitalist creed bank accounts is not covered by actual coins and notes. If all of the account holders at Barclays bank suddenly demanded their money, Barclays will promptly collapse un unless the government steps in to save it. The same is true of Lloyd's, Deutsche Bank, Citibank, and all other banks in the world. It sounds like a giant Ponzi scheme, doesn't it? But if it's a fraud, then in the entire modern economy is a fraud. The fact is, it's not a deception, but rather a tribute to the amazing ability of human imagination. What enables banks and the entire economy to survive and flourish is our trust in the future. This trust is the sole backing for most of the money in the world. So come over here. He quoted that, and then he says, so yes, you can call crypto a Ponzi scheme. So uh, where's it at? Did I put it right here? Uh, right here. XRP, a pyramid scheme or Ponzi scheme, right? So come back over here. So yes, you can call crypto a Ponzi scheme, but that's just because modern economics is all a Ponzi scheme based on trust in the future. To be fair, the author later discusses the need for market regulation in order to protect the necessary trust in the future. And he says, just reporting back as I continue reading. 
<laughs> so it just kind of made me think uh, we as um, you know, investors in the crypto space, doesn't matter what digital asset that you that you hold in your portfolio or that you invest in. It's like a lot of it is built on, you know, obviously trust. Obviously, we try to vet projects based on, you know, uh, their use case utility, the team. Um, you know, the, the, the ecosystem in general, uh, the community, there's so many other things, right? So a lot of us have a lot of, uh, the crypto space has a lot of value for us because we trust in what it's set out to do, solving real world problems. And I'll, there's a lot of scams and a lot of rug pulls and all that stuff, right? But there's still good actors within the industry that are trying to do things the right way, right? Obviously, there isn't regulatory clarity in the US, but they're trying to build blockchain technology companies, they're trying to build you know, for the future. So a lot of the value that's going to be derived from this in this space is stemmed from, you know, trust, you know, uh, obviously people want to make money and all that stuff, but there has to be some sort of level of trust. Right. But obviously when it comes to regulatory clarity within the space, that's going to be the big number there because that's when all the trillions of dollars from these hedge funds and these, you know, these people in positions of massive wealth and power, that's when they're going to come in. Right. But our space stems from that stems from trust. And we see, uh, you know, the deceptions and, and corruptness and conflicts of interest in our old financial system. And, you know, the old, as you can say, the old way of investing into the, the, the traditional markets, you know, we, we see it all. And when it comes to cross border remittances, for example, and I'm just going to throw it out there. This is, you know, I'm a big XRP and ripple fan, right? Cross-border remittances, is how much it costs in fees just to send money when there's other ways of doing it faster, cheaper, you know, less, you know, damage to the to the world, to the economy, to the to the user, to the customer. Right. We see that and we trust in that future, which derives value as well as, you know, obviously the company, the projects, you know, obviously solve problems. There's just it's all a connection. Right. I kind of like, I don't know, I, I can go on forever about this, but I kind of like the connection between the two. And I really, I really like this interview that uh, Brian Brooks had as well. I like how he just kind of called it out like, no, I disagree with both those. And he kind of explained it. But anyways, that's what I have for you. Uh, video's a little bit too long. Make sure you come to the Crypto is Key Conversation YouTube channel. Subscribe and follow us on Crypto is Key 1 on Twitter. I really appreciate your support out there. With all that being said, stay strong out there and be safe.